Hey guys, how's it going today? Hope you guys are having an awesome day today. Before we get started, we have a bunch of things to work on, but we are gonna watch this quick time lapse of uh, the little mall area that I've been working on. Okay, so as you can see, we are um, making things very quickly. And what is this missing? Copper wire, that's fine. We just probably aren't making enough copper wire. Eventually these things will all get full. Um, and what is this missing? Iron beams. You know, we probably <clears throat> are not putting iron beams into our system anywhere. So we just need to do that very quickly here. And we can do that by undergrounding this and this. And then uh, doing passive provider here and doing inserting. There we go. Okay, so that'll start doing that very slowly and we'll speed that up, of course. Um, but yeah, so we're making a lot of essentials. We're making some ammo that we're gonna need probably. Um, in fact, that's just for regular ammo. We probably also can. Um, what is needed for this ammo? Just an anti-material rifle. Sure, let's do this one as well, uh, because I would like to use these um, for the time being at least. There we go. Okay, so all that'll get working and we are gonna start using our uranium up down here. We do have 115 um, U-235, which is quite a lot, but it is not quite a, enough to, I don't think, start doing nuclear power just yet. Um, but as you can see, we have extra power here. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be trying to prepare for, if we go to the Informatron, we go to Energy Beams, uh, you'll see here that there's a cor coronal mass ejection heading for Novice. Estimated defense requirements is 2.28 gigawatts of peak power. So we need 182 gigajoules over two minutes, basically. And that is going to be in 11 hours. So basically what we're going to do for now is we're gonna use this extra power here uh, that we have to basically pay it forward. So we're gonna start using the power now um, to make steam, and then we're gonna store that steam at a very high temperature. And then when that mass ejection comes, um, we're gonna hopefully have enough steam that we can withstand the power requirements for you know the full two minutes that we need. And so how we're gonna calculate this is, um, let's go look at this again. And so you can uh, do this in your own games if you want. So we need 2.28 gigawatts of peak power. And that's gonna be for two minutes, okay? So we need to do some math, okay? So I'm gonna get out my calculator because I wanna make sure that we get this correct, okay? So if we look over here, um, right over here, 
Okay, so we're gonna be using these steam turbines, okay? So it's gonna be 2.28 gigawatts. So this can do 10 megawatts and um, 100 megawatts. So that's gonna take 10. Um, so for 2.28 um, gigawatts, that is gonna be 228 steam turbines to produce that 2.28 gigawatts. And we'll just make it around 230, okay? That way, you know, there's a little bit of extra room for error. Um, so we need 230 steam turbines to make 2.3 gigawatts. Now, the issue with that is that um, we need to have that last for two minutes. So as you can see here, it takes 50 steam per second. So we are gonna multiply that 230 by 50, and that's gonna give us 11,500. So what that means is we're gonna consume every second 11,500 steam, okay? And we need to do that for 120 seconds. We need to multiply that by 120. So we need to have stored 1.38 million steam at that temperature. Now that does seem like quite a lot, um, and it is to be fair, um, but again, we have uh, 11 hours in order to make that steam. Um, so we're just gonna need a crap ton of tanks uh, storing all that steam, and then we'll have um, a bunch of pumps and everything, make sure that our throughput to all the turbines is good. Um, and then from there, uh, you know, once that um, CME hits our planet, um, our umbrella will be activated, and then um, we'll start using up that steam really, really, really quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's the plan, okay? And uh, over here, I have crafted uh, some electric boilers very slowly, um, waiting on copper. We really need to increase our copper production as well, which I'm going to do um, pretty shortly here. And let's throw this ammo in here. Um, okay, so we have some steam. We are gonna need a bunch of tanks. So we t if we take that 1.38 million steam, divide it by 25,000, that's equivalent to 55, 0.2 tanks. Now when you say 55.2 tanks, um, it, then honestly the number does not seem quite as insurmountable. That's one stack and then we have a few extras. I mean, we totally can do that, right? Um, so these, uh, these electric boilers are basically what we're going to use and we're going to need a few other things here. So before I just go flying away, so let's, let's grab some iron here because um, we're going to want to do some circuits because basically what we're going to want to do is we are not going to turn on the power to all of these uh, turbines um, until it's actually really really needed um, and uh, so to do that we need um, as I said we needed those uh, we're going to need a switch we also are going to grab over here all the way down our freaking line um, we are going to grab uh, some accumulators. Okay, so we need some accumulators. And then um, basically we're just gonna use almost right up to the amount of power that we need and uh, or that we can produce currently. And so we also wanna look at this, right? Um, when these things fire, each of these, right? So right now, neither of them is charging Oh, we can make this a requester. Very nice. Cool. Okay, so when, when both of them are charging, uh, it's 20 megawatts. So that's 40 extra megawatts. So we can only use like 50 megawatts doing this right now. That's okay. It might spike a little, so we might end up using a little bit more power than we need to. Um, and I, I think that we just want to pick somewhere by the water. We don't really want to do it over here because this is, um, you know, where a bunch of our buildings are. Maybe we'll do it actually all the way over here. So I'm going to fly over there real fast and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. We are over here. I picked up 100 steam turbines on the way over as well. So how this is going to work is, let's see. So this takes, so we are going to do this 500 degree steam. And if we hook this up, let's see how much energy this is taking five megawatts okay and we can use if we look at our power grid and add 70 to this or 40 to this i mean that's going to put us at 170. so we can use roughly 50 ish megawatts and we'll 
leave a little bit of leeway as well. So 50 megawatts means 10 of these things, which is actually exactly uh, how many I brought. So that works out well. Um, I don't know if we're gonna need an extra pipe on this, but um, we can just run one down to the end if we want. So let's put this here. Uh, it's already powered, which is great. And then we can just connect it up. So these are gonna start working very slowly. Okay, so this makes um, 100 steam every five seconds, okay? So if we have 10 of them, that means that we're gonna make 1,000 steam every five seconds, okay? So if we're making 1,000 steam every five seconds, that means that in a minute, um, we are going to make 5,000, or 1,000, a, a and then uh, five out of 60 is 12, so we're gonna make 12,000 steam every minute, and that means every hour we're gonna make six, uh, 720,000, which means that in two hours with these 10 things working nonstop, we should have enough steam in order to fully uh, withstand this CME that's incoming. Um, so let us hook up uh, the output to these. And there we go. All right. The first time when I was originally starting um, space exploration, the first time I did this, I, <laughs> I'm ashamed to admit, I tried to do um, accumulators because I forgot about steam and it did not work. I just had to like take the CME and thankfully it didn't hit my base, but it could have. Okay, so this is super tedious. Uh, so we're just gonna copy this and we are going to put it down like this, I guess. Okay, and we'll put it down like this. And then I guess we'll put it down like this. So we're just gonna put down all, almost all the tanks that we have. So we have, how many left? We have 18 left and I had had 10 extra. So we should have 10 left over when we're done with this. So I just need to put down five more tanks. Okay, uh, let's see if we can do this. All right, so we have, this, is, this should be, let's just, just double check. So this is 52 tanks. Uh, we actually needed a little bit more than 52, so we're gonna add a little bit extra just to be on the safe side of things. Okay, so this should be, what are we at now? I can't even see. We're at 55 tanks, and are all these producing nonstop? They should be. I think that we can um, produce enough. We're doing, oh, we're doing fine on power too. So we might even be able to add a few more of them, which would make it go a little bit faster. But they should be working nonstop, yeah. So we're doing enough, we're getting enough um, water in here. And if we look at this, oh yeah, we're, we're definitely good on water. All right, perfect. Um, and actually, let's just do this real fast to make sure that we don't um, ever have issues with water. We can just pump it all into a tank here. This will pump fully, and then these should just like never run out, I don't think. At least, <laughs> that's how it would work in my head. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, so that being said, we're gonna start um, very slowly accumulating steam. And as you can see, we've already got 23,000 in our system. And we'll keep an eye on this just to be sure. But we need to do some rows of these things. Now, the throughput <clears throat> is gonna be my only concern. I don't know how many of these I can put in a row and still get decent throughput. So I'm gonna just do something like this maybe. And actually, I, we're getting a little close over here, so maybe I'll put it on the top side. So we'll pick these up. And even like through these tanks, pff, your guess is as good as mine if it's gonna be enough throughput. Because uh, the fluid mechanics in this game can be, can be a little bit wonky. Okay, so let's see. We put down a substation. Okay, this is definitely how many we want. Okay, there we go. We can put down more. So I'm gonna do this really quickly. Put all of the um, tanks or all of the turbines down and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this is all of our turbines. Now, um, we still are missing. <laughs> we needed like what was it, 228 of them? So we're still missing, this is 120, we're still missing 100, and that's including these uh, ghosts, I think. So 
<clears throat> we're still missing, yeah, 120 of them, which is kind of insane. But you can see here that our fluid system is filling up with steam. And basically, we are going to connect um, basically at every single possible point that we can because we uh, want to ensure that there's good throughput to so that we um, we don't end up in a situation where these uh, can't run. And then lastly, uh, something else that we would like to do is um, we're going to craft some cable here and we're going to do some finagling with our um, with our power poles. So we want to connect there, but we want to disconnect this. And we want to disconnect this. So we're basically going to isolate the network that is um, connected to these turbines by, um, by disconnecting them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually connect it to a switch that will decide um, if it should become connected or not. So let's craft a little bit more of this and then um, we might have to craft a combinator as well. So we'll need even more of this. And then, uh, so we're gonna put down an accumulator um, right over here. Uh, how are we gonna do this? Yeah, we'll put down the accumulator right here, okay? So how this works is we're gonna expect that the accumulator should be above a certain level of um, electricity, and if it's not, then the steam turbines are going to kick on, basically. Um, now this could happen naturally by us just running out of power and needing extra, but my goal is to kind of stay under that threshold for now at least um, and continue increasing our other sources of power so that these never kick on. Um, and we're going to connect. Actually, we'll just do like this. And we got to finish disconnecting this stuff. So let's put um, a big power pole over here. And if we, we need <laughs> so much copper cable here. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so as you can see, this is full. And let's do this actually. So if we get our copper cable here, so this we're gonna disconnect from this and this. And then this we're gonna connect over here and over here. So this is one network. This we're gonna disconnect here. This we're gonna disconnect here. This we're gonna disconnect here. And then we're gonna put our switch right over here, which, where is our switch? Oh, we didn't craft it. That is why. Okay, so our switch is gonna go like right here and we are going to have a copper cable coming in uh, from this tower to this side of the switch, and then we're gonna have a copper cable coming from this side of the switch over to our internal network, okay? And I think we must have like one inadvertently connected still or something. Oh, it has zero watts, just kidding, so we're good. And then uh, we're gonna have our combinator down here, okay? So I'll have a combinator here. Right, this is full energy, which is what we want. We're gonna have our combinator connected to the input here. And then um, this, you can see it has an output signal A. You can see the input is 100, okay? So that just means it's 100% charge. So if A becomes less than, let's say 20%, so it's gotta drop pretty far, we're gonna output one green signal. Again, I like to use green. And then here, we're going to have enabled be green is uh, equal to one. Okay, so basically all of these, um, this switch will connect and then it will start inputting power into our main network uh, when we get low. And yeah, that's exactly what we want. So now we are going to connect up all of these and not exactly sure why they're running. They're running at one kilowatt. Well, I don't want to be using any steam. And it's probably because of that, um, this dang uh, thing right here. 
I don't know, it's probably, you know what it's probably doing? Is it's probably <laughs> powering this combinator. All right, so you wanna disconnect this obviously because this is gonna ruin everything. So disconnect, disconnect. Okay, and then we're gonna actually move this over here. Uh, so that's not powering it. There we go. Okay, so now it should be completely off. That's what we want. So we might have wasted a little bit of steam there, but that's okay. Um, okay, and then we're gonna connect up the rest of these pipes as best we can. So we have this here. Um, you know, we have this pipe here. This uh, pipe here. Um, we can connect this all the way over here. and we're out of pipes. So I'm gonna go grab um, more materials and more turbines to try and finish off this ginormous array. And uh, once I have that, I will be right back. All right, so um, we have a couple issues here. Um, so the first of which is that these uh, turbines aren't being made because we have um, no electric motors, and we have no electric motors because we have no copper, and we have no copper because our copper belts are slow. And even though I've upgraded all of these to Mark IIs, um, we just are not producing enough copper. Um, so we have a couple options, one of which is, um, and I think this is probably the more straightforward one, is to add another like lane of processing over here. Um, we don't have beacons yet, so we can't, um, we can't do, you know, we can't beacon these and make them faster by, you know, uh, adding a bunch of modules and stuff like that, which is unfortunate. Um, we are also super low on steel. We have like no steel left. Um, and why is this not? And we have no steel because we have no coke. And we have no coke because we have no uh, coal. And we have no coal because our patch is running out. 500,000 left. And even though I've... Jeez, that's loud. And even though I've upgraded all of these um, as well to Mark IIs, um, we still just are not getting enough coal through here. Uh, so we have a bunch of issues with our base that we just have to like up the production. So again, we have to up our copper production because we have not enough. We have to up our coal production. Um, <clears throat> and so as much as we would like to finish, you know, this entire array right now, we just, we cannot. Um, it is not physically possible with the amount of production that we're doing. The good news is that we can still be producing steam this whole time. So we're gonna continue producing steam at full breakneck pace, um, but uh, we just aren't gonna be able to be ready fully for the CME. But again, we have 10 and a half hours still um, until we uh, absolutely need to be ready. So it's okay if this is gonna take a bit longer while we do some other things. So. Uh, what I was thinking is I wanted to uh, do one more thing uh, this episode for sure. And that is if we go to the universe and we come to the Calidus asteroid belt, um, we have this awesome spaceship that's a little broken down. But I would love to go grab that um, for a couple reasons. One, I think it's just fun. Um, but two, it uh, will give us a good way to like get back and forth to like Keon, for instance, where all of our cryonite processing is. So it'd be very easy to head over there um, to do some fixes on that base because as I said before, we kind of want to switch our cryonite processing over to that planet. So having stuff like this um, would be a great way to get around. Plus there are a bunch of perks of getting this. We have like belts and uh, space pipes and uh, all sorts of resources and things like that that we get with it. Not to mention we get the ship itself, so that's freaking cool. So we're gonna go do that. And um, in order to do that, um, we're gonna do a couple things. So we have to take a rocket, okay? We're gonna take this rocket here, um, but we don't wanna take all of these uh, resources with us. So I'm gonna get rid of these for now and then we'll re redo that later. Um, but we're gonna put them into, uh, let's see, we have a warehouse, we have a warehouse. Okay, we're gonna put everything into a warehouse. Um, 
I don't care what. We're just gonna put everything in because we don't need. We don't want to take everything here. Um, we just want to take the rocket itself and literally nothing else. And then for the time being, we're gonna switch this to go to the Calidus asteroid belt one. I think yeah, one. And um, this asteroid belt has methane, ice, and barrel. So we are going to leave a landing pad there. So we're not just going to go there. And I think actually that the, if we come back over here, I think that this thing has a landing pad, which you guys won't be able to see because of my camera. So let me take this off real fast. But if we look here at the uh, logistic system storage, you can see that coming here, you know, we are spending an entire rocket to do it, but we're getting some pretty awesome uh, perks in return. And there is a landing pad, so we don't have to craft one before we go. So we're gonna head over here and do this as soon as this is empty, which it almost is. And let's see, do we need anything? I don't think we need anything else uh, to bring with us. Let's just get rid of all these. We don't need these, we don't need these, we don't need these, we don't need these. Uh, we don't need this, we don't need this. We can put our logistic bot back into the network. Okay, that looks good. Uh, we don't need. We don't need these. Um, all right, so we're gonna bring all of that. We've still got some life support canisters, which is good. And we'll take those. And then we are gonna jump in here. Um, and we are gonna head over there. I've been wanting to do this for a long while now. Absolutely wonderful. And where are we? Okay, not too far away. Thank goodness. <laughs> Didn't want to have to fly too far. All right, so let's turn our bots on. They'll pick some stuff up. And can we? How much of this stuff can we pick up? Probably most of it. Just want to do this because we might as well get the scrap back and like reuse it. Scrap, scrap, scrap. Okay, there we go. So that's a bunch of scrap. <clears throat> and then let us fly on over here. Check it out. So freaking cool. Okay. So we're going to have to fix up the spaceship because as you can tell, there's uh, some broken pieces and stuff over here. Let's pick up this, pick up this, pick up this. Um, and then let's see, how are we gonna do this? Touch to capture. Um, I don't know what that means, but okay. Let's get rid of this stuff. More ruinous stuff. Aha, and it is ours, maybe? It is ours, haha. -ha. Okay, you can see all the colors switch to our color. Um, and then we have to fix the ship because if we come over here and click this uh, start integrity check You will see uh, some sections will disconnect when maneuvering um, And it also kind of highlights in red the areas that are bad um, So let's see we have a bunch of uh, spaceship stuff in here. So let's grab all this stuff and Let's see spaceship walls spaceship doors spaceship ion engine so, let's see, and I think we should have, let's see, over here maybe, yeah, here's some flat solar panels, we're going to need solar panels in here. Can't place them quite yet, uh, but let's replace this floor with spaceship scaffold, or er, this, uh, with this spaceship, what's it called? Spaceship floor, yeah. So let's replace this, and then we can place um, a flat solar panel in here. And then we'll just kind of duplicate what's done on the other side over here. So it goes like this, like this. Yeah, it's something like that. And then we'll just make sure that this is all floored over here, which it looks like it is now. Very cool. Let's get rid of that and close that up. And then back here, we'll do the same. We'll come back like this. I don't know how far back it needs to go. Maybe a little bit further, like one section further, and then we'll grab this engine. So, fun fact, um, ion engines are actually 
theoretically real things, but as far as I know, they've never actually been used in a real spaceship. Um, and uh, part of the reason is that you can't, the technology is just a little bit too difficult to do. Um, but, but an interesting thing is that ion, like using ion streams or ion particles, is a way that we could hypothetically power spaceships. Um, but, uh, and this is reflected in this game, you can't la launch it off of a planet. So you could be able to fly it in outer space where there's zero Gs, um, but you couldn't launch it off of a planet because the uh, thrust that you get from it is just so low that you'd never be able to get off the surface. But in outer space where there's um, only planetarial or planet gravity that you have to worry about and there's zero Gs besides, you can get just enough um, propulsion in order to start moving uh, or changing the velocity of your spaceship. So I think that's kind of cool that like if you landed on a, on a planet with these ion engines, you'd never be able to take off in space exploration. So I think that's uh, an awesome design choice. Um, and hopefully you just learned something as well. All right, so let's, I think it's kind of cool. We're gonna, we can do this and walk off the front of the ship. Um, and do we need to do anything else here? I don't think so. So let's check this integrity check. And I guess there's a bad piece over here. Let's try again. Aha, ship integrity valid, which is awesome. And as I said before, we wanted to put down wherever this thing, oh, let's put down these if we can. We put one down there, put one down there. I guess that's supposed to be a, a laser there. Let's take this down and we're gonna put these back here. That's fine. Okay, and then we wanted to do, oh no, did I just delete some? I just deleted some. <laughs> oh no, that sucks. Okay, well, we can't make ion streams yet. Okay, we're gonna grab this cargo pad. As soon as we make ion streams, we'll be able to power it anyways, but that just sucks that I deleted a bit. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Okay, uh, but now we have a landing pad here, so if we ever want to come to this uh, asteroid belt, we'll be able to. And yeah, so uh, to head out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select... Um, novice orbit as our destination and it says travel time three hours it, i don't think it'll take that long um and let's do launch here we are and if we engage this let's see how long it's actually going to take okay like three ish two ish minutes depending on how fast we can go um so i'm going to time lapse through this and we'll be right back once we make it to orbit Okay, as you can see, we have arrived and we have an option to anchor to novice orbit. So we can come over here and we're like way out of the way over there. Um, but I figure, well, I would like to dock here because I think this is where we were originally supposed to dock, but that's okay. We can dock like right next to it, like right, right here maybe. So that seems like a good place to anchor and check it out. Um, that ended up taking probably about four or five minutes because we kept running out of electricity because we weren't producing enough to both power um, our engines and all of our laser turrets. So it's not quite um, as fast of a ship as I would like, but we can definitely uh, make improvements to this design um, to like add in more ac accumulators and things like that so that maybe we can make travel a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, that's that's how that works, and it's pretty freaking awesome uh, that we can do that. And, uh, oh, looks like all of our scrap is getting taken by the bots. Thank you very much, guys. Um, and then we can actually just head back down to the surface uh, with a capsule that I brought. Um, how much does this need? Uh, fuel, 40 fuel. I think I even have enough fuel. Almost. There we go. One, two, three, four, fuel. And we can launch. Very cool, guys. I mean, 
Uh, that's awesome that we have a uh, rocket ship that we can use. And I know that you can automate those. Um, I don't know exactly how, though. So that's something that I will have to learn in the future. Um, but I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, we're preparing for the CME. And um, either in between episodes or next episode, I don't know exactly how it's going to work. But uh, we are definitely going to have to increase production. That is uh, very clear by how slowly our base is... Um, Making things right now, especially these red circuits, they are dying over here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, our goal is going to be to increase production as much as possible. Um, but that's going to have to happen next time, guys. So thank you guys for joining. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, it would be great if you could subscribe or like the video. And I'll see you all on the next episode.